the most important. It isn't. Because the experts can look at what you've got and figure out it's a brachypod. If you know it's Platystrophia, great. If you know it's Platystrophia ponderosa, fantastic. Put it down. It's okay to guess. Because if you say this is Platystrophia ponderosa and somebody else looks at it, nah, it's Laticosta, they're going to they're gonna relabel it Laticosta. Uh, and they do have, they actually have experts in each of the phyla or the particular type of fossil come in and sit with drawers in their particular expertise and re, you know, make sure things are, in fact, scientifically labeled correctly. So they do have people who sit down and you'll see little cards in there saying, Platystrophia, a lot of cost of, you know, so and so with their initials and a date that they re, re designated. Uh, here's an example of one of my labels. I just took this, I do it on an Excel, Excel spreadsheet. I do keep consecutive numbers by site. It doesn't mean anything. Uh, collected by John and Tate. Ordovician, Upper Cincinnati Arts, which probably just be Cincinnati, Richmond, um, USA, Indiana, Union County, Site 20. <coughs> You'll see down here lower, I've got what Site 20 is, but I also say, Ralph, <coughs> here's my site list description of that, which, whoops, what do we want here? No? Repeated on the label. Because this is separate. This is a list of sites I keep in another spreadsheet. It may get separated from that label. So you want to put everything, and then I can put Platus Prostria Ponderosa right here. <coughs> but there's an example of one way to do it. I've got some uh, do's and don'ts. Okay. When you go collecting, you got a bag of fossils, you got five bags of fossils. As soon as you get back, take a sheet of any type of paper, write on it the location, you know, St. Leon, and put the date. <coughs> the reason is, three months from later, you look at that bag of fossils, particularly if you've gone on another field trip. It's this from St. They all look the same. So it's so easy, right after you get back, put a very temporary label in the bag, and when you look at that three months later, you're like, oh yeah, this is the You'll save you, I don't know how many times I've got the bag and said, uh, you know, it becomes junk at that point. Uh, do separate fossils by gender and species, including, and then, then include a full label in each bag or box. The reason is if you throw trilobites in with uh, kind of derms, with, with brachiopods, all came from some. If the, univer or if the museum center was to accept those, they're going to separate them out into echinoderms, into brachiopods, and you've only got one label in there. And the label will go with one group. If you're lucky, somebody will accurately copy everything you put on your label. It's so much easier with computers. Print six labels. You know, I have 20 to a sheet, the way I do it. And just cut them out. And stick them in, you know, separate them out. If you can do it by species, you know, you can see a bunch of them that you think are latacostas. Put all the latacostas together. They're going to stay together. Put a label with them. Uh, don't mix all the fossils from one location in one bag or a box with one label. That's the same thing. Uh, the fossil will eventually be separated by type, and, and uh, the one label will only stay with one kind of fossil. And that leaves, I, you know, there's boxes down there, beautiful specimens, no label. I can guess, but we don't guess. Unless we got a label, we don't, you know. I can tell Cincinnati stock probably where it came from. We don't make the guess. Uh, you're supposed to use permanent ink and, if possible, acid-free paper. Acid-free paper is hard to get. All right. If you can, can't find acid-free paper, use good quality paper. Uh, I've seen labels that are on the back of uh, bank the deposit slips that are 100 years old. One was on a pool hall receipt, in fact, uh, <laughs> uh, for Mount Montgomery Road. Uh, back of a pool hall receipt. Uh, they'll last. They, they, they keep all the labels. If you temporarily write a pencil and stick it in there in the back of an envelope, that'll stay with it. If you kept it, we'll keep it. All right? So uh, 
But, it, it, I mean, the best thing is acid-free. If you can't get a good quality paper, <clears throat> get some good computer ink and print your labels. And that way they'll last the longest time. Most of the new stuff that's coming in will get in the computer faster. And once it's in the computer, of course, we can reprint another label if we had to. Uh, one thing, don't use odd abbreviations or code name locations. There's a, you may probably remember, there was a place we all called the Arby's site. Over in, well, why? Because there was an Arby's across the street. Everybody knew at the time where the Arby's site was. The trouble is now, which is 15 years later, 10 years, it's now the door is on it. Arby's, I think, is gone. So if you refer to something as the Arby's site, because everybody's calling it that, nobody's going to know where it is. So you, you got to watch odd abbreviations, you know, unless it's something pretty common like ME for Northeast, and it would be what a direction would be. People aren't going to be able to figure it out. Um, so just, you know, put a look, spend a little more time right, right it is whatever you want out. Be careful with place descriptions as name business city boundaries change over time. Think about it. You said one and a half, one and one and a half miles west of Cincinnati in 1850. That's one thing. You said it in 1925. It's another thing. And by 2010, it could be a third thing. So you're better off to, to name a street, uh, uh, address, uh, grid coordinates, something that's probably going to stay there. Even though street names will change, if you put the date in, you collect it. People can go back and do the research and figure out what you're talking about. Um, also, you can write, if you've got a slab, you can write on a fossil with permanent black ink with a magic marker, permanent one. Uh, don't write over the important fossil. You can circle it or draw an arrow around it. That's my words of wisdom. <laughs>